Good evening. Welcome to QUT Web News. Australian construction companies receiving grants for large projects will now be required to source Australian-made products. Prime Minister Julia Gillard announced the decision, which has come after significant pressure from industry and union groups. Announced at the close of the One Day Jobs Forum in Canberra, the mandatory use of local products by manufacturing companies has received widespread support. The new measures will apply to projects receiving federal government grants of more than $20 million. The move has been given a resounding thumbs up by union groups who have been demanding action to prevent the loss of jobs to overseas suppliers. I think that the announcement by the uh, Prime Minister yesterday is a great first step to ensure that local manufacturers and local content and therefore local jobs and local workers uh, get, to get, get treated properly. The initiative has been welcomed by representatives of Australia's construction sector which has seen a downhill slide in profits. This is more about ensuring that businesses are innovative and that they operate efficiently and productively so that they can compete against other nations and the businesses um, that are also competing in Australia for that type of work. Union workers say the move will put companies in a better position to secure work against offshore rivals. We need to ensure that those local companies are properly geared up to be able to be competitive against overseas contractors. What we want to make sure though is that when they do compete they're not competing with one hand tied behind their back. The Buy Australia policy aims to address the low percentage of local content currently used in Australian projects. The new measures will ensure the sustainability of resources, support manufacturers and bring profit back into a struggling Australian industry. Confronted by the weak Australian dollar, Prime Minister Gillard hopes the manufacturing industry will be strengthened by the new policy. Laura Evans, QUT News. After almost two years of demolition, work on Brisbane's historic City Hall has reached turning point. Reconstruction is underway and the city's most recognisable landmark should be open to the public again in little over a year. Brisbane City Hall closed its doors in December 2009 to undergo large-scale restoration. Work has now turned to recreating the historic interior we all know so well. But there will be some modernisation. The acoustics in the auditorium will be state-of-the-art and cutting-edge technology is being integrated into all areas of the building. The work will not only restore the building to its former glory, but also provide a new cultural venue. But it comes at an estimated cost of around $215 million. We're on budget and on time at the moment. Obviously this is a very complex project, being a heritage project, and it's presented many challenges. While Brisbane City Council remains enthusiastic about the project, the opposition isn't sure it's money well spent. The 2010 City Hall Committee report shows the Council can't yet meet the $215 million budget. Well, what we've seen is we've seen them promise, uh, you know, 10, uh, $52 million from Brisbane residents and get 1.8. What we've seen is them promise $100 million from the state and federal government and get 10. But the council insists they do have the money to finish the project. And council has always said that we will fund any shortfall out of that $215 million from the council budget. Ratepayers will soon know City Hall is due to reopen in the next 12 months. Sarah Shands, QUT News. The travel plans of Qantas passengers were disrupted again today, even though a nationwide strike by the Transport Workers Union was called off. Baggage handlers and ground staff were set to stop working for two hours this morning as part of an ongoing dispute over pay and working conditions. Qantas cancelled or delayed flights in the preparation, but the TWU called off the industrial action late yesterday. Qantas said it wasn't enough time to prevent passengers being affected. A recent study shows the sun's UV rays are more dangerous than previously thought. In the past, research focused on the damage UVB rays cause to the skin, but now it's clear UVA rays are also a threat. The research shows deeper layers of skin are more susceptible to UVA radiation. Most Australian sunscreens protect against both UVA and UVB, but scientists say the findings emphasise the need to limit solarium exposure. Australia has the highest rate of skin cancer in the world. Australia's largest pizza delivery company, Domino's, is trialling a fleet of electric scooters as a new sustainability initiative. It's one of many Australian companies committed to reducing their carbon footprint. Instead of wafting petrol fumes into the atmosphere, these scooters are leaving behind the sweet smell of ham and pineapple pizzas. And rather than roaring round through the streets, these delivery drivers are gliding silently around town. Until now, Domino's has relied on hundreds of petrol-driven bikes to deliver its pizzas across Australia. 
Eventually, they plan to replace them with clean, green machines. We're hoping that um, the, the trial that we're using right now will continue and, um, and uh, at some stage in, in later years that our entire fleet will be electric scooters. Mr Jones says wherever possible, their new stores are using recycled materials and they're working on a number of initiatives in gas and electricity reductions. I think our dream in a, in a, in a domino store is the, is the uh, domino store of the future will be made of recycled uh, timbers. They'll be a lot more efficient in electricity and in gas. The company's employees think it's a great initiative. For one of the cars that we purchase, we can probably get about about six scooters for the same cost and then running costs to fill up a car probably costs about $40. Fill up a scooter costs about $2. Over the next few years, Domino's will replace current models with these environmentally friendly scooters, meaning Domino's will have the largest electric scooter fleet in Australia. Mariska Murphy, QUT News. Now to sport, a mount panorama has been filled with the thunder of V8s as qualifying rounds for the Bathurst 1000 get underway. Wet conditions on the famed mountain today mix things up for drivers. The Bathurst 1000 has roared to life with Holden's Garth Tander qualifying fastest. Mark Winterbottom scored the second best time of the day and Jamie Wincup came back to qualify third after hitting a wall in practice. The 161 lap race around the legendary Mount Panorama track starts on Sunday morning and is expected to last seven grueling hours. Another kind of roar will kick off the new A-League season against the Central Coast Mariners. It's a grudge match. The Brisbane side defeated the Mariners in the dying minutes to seize the A-League crown last year. Despite the departure of former captain Matt Mackay, coach Ange Postacoglu is confident about the Roar's prospects. I'm on record as saying that I'm really happy with our squad and uh, I think we're stronger this year than we were last year. The Roar's title defence starts here tomorrow night. And despite being in the middle of a 28-game winning streak, they say they're starting their season fresh. The season opener will also be Matt Smith's debut as captain. He says he's certain the Raw will be title contenders again and is positive he will be playing despite back spasms. In other football news, the Socceroos will take on Malaysia in a friendly match at Canberra Stadium tonight. Head coach Holger Osiek says the Australian squad is the strongest possible and gives some young players the chance to prove themselves. Across the Tasman, the Wallabies take on World Cup favourites South Africa in Wellington on Sunday. Kurtley Beale, Digby Ione and Pat McCabe have all been cleared from injuries to play in the elimination quarter-final. Although Australia's recent record against the Springboks is impressive, the Wallabies know eliminations are a completely different game. Casey Fung, QT News. A new Aussie film is set to premiere in Brisbane tonight. The Cup chronicles jockey Damien Oliver's emotional win in the 2002 Melbourne Cup. I was the one out there riding professionally. I was the one following in our dad's footsteps. It's a story of two brothers. One dies in a horse racing accident just days before the running of the Melbourne Cup, and the other goes on to win the race in his brother's honour. Well, I think most people will remember that day, those particularly that watch the Melbourne Cup, and most of the nation does. It was such a an emotional moment in, uh, in Australian, you know, sporting folklore. Mr Winsor says the Cup will bring horse racing to the big screen as it has never been seen before. The excitement of what it's like when you're up close with uh, 23 galloping horses at 60k and just that magic sound that you get. Star Stephen Curry hopes Australia will embrace the film as a real Aussie legend, the story of Damien Oliver. Mr Curry says Damien is a strong character who gets up when he's knocked down and never gives up. It is, um, you know, a, a uniquely Australian story, and um, but I, I think at the, at the same time it's a very universal tale of, um, of triumph over adversity. He says playing a real-life character means he has a duty to get the details right. The first time Mr Curry saw the finished film was during an emotional screening he shared with Damien Oliver Look, and sure his wife. They both said they loved it and, and that, uh, that Jason would have loved it too, so for us that's, that's the best review we could possibly ask for. Mr Winsor has been involved in some of Australia's largest grossing and most iconic films, including The Man from Snowy River, The Light Horseman and Far Lap. It's hoped the film will help reignite the Australian film industry. If you make great Aussie stories, people will watch. It's the same with movies, you know. Look at um, the success of uh, Australian films over the years and uh, hopefully we're seeing a bit of a rebirth. The Cup is set to open around Australia next Thursday. Daniela Sundy-Brown, QUT News. University students are feeling the pressure with end-of-year exams just around the corner. 
For those looking for a little extra luck, jacaranda trees may have the answer. Stress levels are high and the pressure is on for uni students. Some need a companion to walk them through the exam period, while for others, it's all too much. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of pressure, so I spend most of my days um, studying at uni during that time. I've got a really bad exam timetable. It just depends on how much you've prepared before you actually go into exams. But some students think luck is the key to tertiary success. These purple jacaranda flowers may seem pretty to some, but superstition suggests they have the power to affect your grades. Legend has it, walking beneath a flowering jacaranda tree brings desirable exam results, while sitting below the blossoms achieves the opposite. But academics warn there's more to success than superstition. In terms of the jacaranda tree, it's just a timely reminder that when it's flowering, uh, that it's probably getting too late to study. And wary students agree. I think if you don't study and a jacaranda leaf, a flower falls on your head, you won't pass. I've also heard a superstition that if you step on a jacaranda flower, then you'll fail. Danica Ferguson, QUT News. Time now for a look at the weather. And on our time-lapse Skycam, we can see it was an overcast start to the day for Brisbane, but the cloud cover lifted, leaving perfect blue skies in the afternoon. And around the nation tomorrow, showers are expected in most of our capital cities, with possible thunderstorms in Melbourne. In Queensland, it will be mostly fine in the northwest of the state tomorrow, but rain and thunderstorms are forecast for further south. And that brings you up to date with the weather. That's all the news we have for now, and indeed for this week. We'll be back on Monday with more QUT News. Until then, goodbye. Goodbye.